brothers and sisters, this is the Remnant Warrior from Kingdom Productions Network. I wanted to thank you all for watching this video and all Kingdom Productions Network content and ask that you please hit the like button because it truly helps the channel grow and new people see the content. And if you aren't already subscribed, please consider hitting the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you'll know each time we upload new content. Grace and peace. Okay, greetings brothers and sisters. Uh, this is the Remnant Watchman. Uh, and I am going to continue with the study on Revelation. We have to look at Revelation chapter 4. Now, Revelation chapter 4 is one of my personal favorite chapters in the Bible. And it describes the heavenly worship of God and Jesus Christ by the heavenly beings. Now, John says, after this I looked, and there in heaven a door stood open. And the first voice which I had heard speaking to me like a trumpet said, Come up here, and I will show you what must take place after this. Now, you know that earlier in Revelation it is said that when uh, God opens a door, nobody can close that door. When God closes a door, nobody can open that door. So what is very significant here is that John sees a door open in heaven. The significance of that is God is saying to him that, listen, I'm giving you access to heaven. And we know that by the Lord Jesus Christ, by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, and by having a relationship with him as your Lord and Savior, a door in heaven is open for us. And we long to be to come to that day when we can enter through that door and be with God in the new Jerusalem. So this is very significant. Uh, many times we will read this part and we will just say, oh, okay, so John said he saw a door standing open in heaven. But know that this door is God granting his beloved, the ones who belong to him through Jesus Christ, access to heaven. And this relates to the eternal promise that we have, that when we uh, confess with our mouth that Jesus Christ is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, and if we believe in our heart that He is the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and when we confess and we believe that He died on the cross, He conquered death, and He ascended to heaven, then we will be with him in eternity. Um, obviously, Jesus said in John 10 verse 10, he said that he comes to give life and give it in abundance. So this door in heaven that God opens to us is a door that he has opened and nobody can close that door. Not Satan, not any fallen angel, not a demon, not any human being. Nobody can close that door. All right. Then we see in verse 2, John says, At once I was in the Spirit, and there in heaven stood a throne, with one seated on the throne. All right. Now, obviously a throne symbolizes um, majesty. It symbolizes rulership, authorship, uh, authority. It symbolizes righteousness. And we know that one of the descriptions given of Jesus Christ is that He is our righteous judge. He is the righteous one. And... Um, the righteousness of God that we hold in our hearts. Um, in Ephesians 6, it is described as the breastplate of righteousness because it guards our hearts against losing hope. It guards us against the unrighteousness of this world. So, in verse 3, he says, And the one seated there looks like Jasper. Now, pay close attention. There's three um, stones mentioned here. The one seated there looks like Jasper. There's the first one, and Cornelian, there's the second stone. And around the throne is a rainbow that looks like an emerald. Okay, so we have Jasper, Cornelian, and Emerald. 
Now the first stone, Jasper, in ancient Hebrew symbolism, Jasper symbolizes the glory of the Lord, the glory of the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Okay. Then the second stone, Cornelian, in ancient Hebrew symbolism, that was the stone that was placed on the shoulder of the robe of the high priest. On each sh shoulder he had a Cornelian stone. Okay. And then around the throne is a rainbow. Remember always the rainbow refers to the covenant that God made with Noah when he said after the flood that um, I will not, uh, this is my promise that I will never again uh, flood the whole world at once. Okay. So the rainbow obviously symbolizes the fact that God keeps his promises. God is true. He is faithful. Now, sadly, in our day and time, the LGBTQ plus movement has hijacked the rainbow as a symbol and they use it as their symbol. So they are taking a holy symbol of God and they are profaning it to mean something that is totally anti-Christian. Okay. May the Lord have mercy on them. And may they come to Jesus Christ before it's too late. He says that the rainbow looks like an emerald. An emerald in ancient Hebrew symbolism symbolizes to endure. Um, I'm looking for another word. To persist. Uh, to persist in prayer during times of adversity. So let's look closely. The glory of the Lord, Jasper, the high priest, Cornelian, the authority of the high priest, emerald, persisting in prayer during times of adversity. So what is God saying here to John? He's saying, you are standing before the throne on which is seated the one that is there. He has the glory of God. He is the high priest. Now, according to the book of Hebrews, who is our perfect high priest? It's Jesus Christ. And then, he is the one that will be with you in times of adversity. In other words, through trials and tribulations, persecutions, everything, the righteous and perfect high priest, Jesus Christ himself, will be with you. And we know that he is with us through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit always points to Jesus. Jesus always points to God the Father. Okay. So, you know, if we read the book of Acts, we know that in the book of Acts, the first church had endured very uh, hard times. They had endured a lot of trials and tribulations, suffering, persecution, a lot of things. But God always provided for them. When there seemed to be no way, God made a way. Um, I, immediately I'm thinking of uh, Peter being in jail and an angel of the Lord comes and frees him from the jail. Um, any moment we are going through a time of tribulation and suffering, God will provide a way for us. So Jesus is saying, listen, I am the high priest. I have the glory of God and I inspire you and I plead with you to persist in prayer in times of adversity. This is basically what he's saying to John through the symbolism that John is seeing here. You know, someone once said, I'm not sure who it was, but someone once said, um, when times are hard, you should pray. When times are good, you should pray. And we see that also in, in, the, um, in, his, letter, in his second letter to the Thessalonians. Uh, the Apostle Paul said that um, uh, pray without ceasing. We should always prayerfully think of the Lord. And the prayer can be where you physically sit, you close your eyes and you, and you talk to God. You can also pray while you are driving in your car with your eyes on the road and watching what's going on around you. You talk to the Lord. That's also a prayer. 
You can pray to the Lord while you're at work doing something. You can you can talk to God while you are before you go to sleep at night when you're laying in your bed. That's the wonderful thing. We can talk to him anytime. And that's what he wants us to do. And that's why Paul tells us to pray without ceasing. Around the throne are 24 thrones, and seated on the thrones are 24 elders, dressed in white robes with golden crowns on their heads. Now, as far as I know, the 24 elders that is around the throne of God, it is 12 and 12. 12 of them are the 12 apostles, and the other 12 are the... Um, basically rep they represent the 12 tribes of Israel okay and they have crowns on their heads now remember that the Apostle Paul also clearly says that we each will receive a crown from God okay we will be crowned by God and that indicates the sonship that he that he uh, gives us uh, the way that he invests in us um, as his beloved He's his beloved followers, his beloved children, the friends of Jesus. Remember, Jesus said that I call you my friends. I no longer call you servants or slaves because the servant and the slave doesn't know what their master is doing. I call you my friends. And we know that we will each receive a white robe. We will each receive a crown and we will each receive a new name when we um, finally uh, get to it, uh, when we are in heaven with God, when we are in the New Jerusalem with Jesus Christ at the marriage supper of the Lamb. Now, <clears throat> remember that we said now that Jesus is basically telling John that I want you to persist in prayer in times of, of adversity. Now, the 12, 12 tribes of Israel um, obviously also went through our times. I mean, at the time of the 12 tribes, um, there were constant wars. Um, there was even civil war in Israel. Um, at one time, while David was king, there was even civil war between um, uh, Judah and, um, if I remember correctly, it was between Jerusalem and Judah. And there were constant wars with the Philistines. Um, there was war with the Assyrians, the Babylonians. So we see in the Old Testament constantly when a priest, when a, a priest or a prophet intercedes for the nation, when they intercede for the people, then they are a type of Christ. They are a foreshadowing of Christ as the perfect high priest. Because Jesus intercedes for us as the perfect high priest, also stated in the um, book of Hebrews. All right, so <clears throat> we know that the first church uh, also went through a lot of tribulations and suffering. So when Jesus says through the symbolism that I want you to persist in prayer in times of adversity, we can see, immediately see the 24 elders being the 12 who are the, the 12 apostles and the other 12 who represent the 12 tribes. We can see them as examples of people who persisted in prayer and who kept the faith till the very end. And they each have a crown on their head, okay, a crown of righteousness. Coming from the throne are flashes of lightning and rumblings and peals of thunder, and in front of the throne burn seven flaming torches, which are the seven spirits of God. Now remember, as we said before, the seven spirits of God refers to the sevenfold spirit, and that is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has a sevenfold um, ministry, basically. And the seven spirits that is included in the <coughs> sevenfold ministry of the Holy Spirit um, are talked about in Isaiah. Um, let me just get the correct chapter. I always forget. It's either... Yeah, it's Isaiah 11. Isaiah 11. A shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. Okay, so this is obviously referring to Jesus being um, born out of the line of David. Then he says, the spirit of the Lord shall rest on him. So here he describes the sevenfold spirit. Firstly, it's the spirit of the Lord, the spirit of wisdom, spirit of understanding, spirit of counsel, spirit of might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. 
So you have a spirit of knowledge, and then number seven is the spirit of the fear of the Lord. Okay, so that's the sevenfold spirit that he, the book of Revelation constantly refers to. And in front of the throne, there is something like a sea of glass, like crystal. Now, crystal and glass in ancient Hebrew symbolism is about um, transparency and it's about clarity and it's about. Um, you know, uh, it, it also symbolizes purity. So it says that in the presence of God, there's purity, there's clarity, there's transparency. Okay. Around the throne and on each side of the throne are four living creatures full of eyes in front and back. Now the four living creatures around the throne of God, this is where uh, we find an intertextual parallel with Isaiah chapter 6. Because in Isaiah chapter 6, Isaiah saw the living beings around the throne of God. But these, in, in Isaiah's, um, in, in the vision of Isaiah, the four living beings were seraphim. Okay. Um, yeah, they were seraphim. Um, Ezekiel saw the cherubim. Okay. Those are two different orders. And the way that uh, John describes the living beings, he says they have six wings. Now, the seraphim usually have six wings. The cherubim have four wings. And as far as I understand the order of angels, the seraphim are basically, they are high, um, higher in rank than the cherubim. I think they are like one uh, level higher in rank than the cherubim. But whether it's, seraphim or cherubim around the throne of God. I think both of them are around the throne of God. Um, what is important here is to know that these angels, these um, angels is not the correct term, these heavenly beings or these sons of God, because angel is a job description. It means messenger. Okay. It's one of the lower orders. We get angels, archangels, you get thrones, dominions, principalities, and at the higher orders, you get the cherubim, the seraphim, um, the ophanim, and so on. But the important thing here is to know that these heavenly beings are in a constant state of worship before God. So their consciousness is in such a way that the, the, the glory of God is so overwhelming that in their consciousness, they are constantly in a state of worship and glorifying God, day and night. That just shows you the almightiness of the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. He is almighty. There is no one like him. Okay. Um, he describes the creatures, um, the first living creature like a lion, the second like an ox, the third with a face like a human, the fourth living creature like a flying eagle, and the four living creatures, each of them with six wings, are full of eyes all around and inside. Day and night, without ceasing, they sing, Holy, 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 the Lord God, the Almighty, who was and is and is to come. So, three times holy, um, that refers to the Trinity. Holy is the Father, Holy is the Son, Holy is the Spirit. Okay? Holy, 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 the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. So they are glorifying God in eternity. They say that He uh, reigns eternally. Yesterday, today and tomorrow. Okay. And whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to the one who is seated on the throne, who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before the one who is seated on the throne and worship the one who lives forever. And they cast their crowns before the throne singing, you are worthy, our Lord and God. This is my favorite verse in Revelation 4, the last verse, verse 11. You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and by your will they existed and were created. And remember that um, when we refer to the Trinity, you can see the Trinity in Genesis chapter 1. Because what does it say? It says, in the beginning God refers to God the Father, created the heavens and the earth. And then it says that the Spirit of God was moving upon the water. So there we have the Holy Spirit. And then he says, let there be light. Who is the light of the world? Jesus Christ. This doesn't mean that he created Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is not, was, is not a created being. Okay, He was there since forever. But what he's saying is, 
when he says let there be light it's the physical creation of light okay as the opposite of darkness but he's also referring to his son jesus christ as the light of the world so there's a deeper spiritual meaning behind the initial meaning all right so i hope that this study has um has blessed you and i will just close for us in prayer our dear heavenly father lord we thank you we glorify your name lord you are precious you are almighty you are all knowing you are the god of abram isaac and jacob you are the one true creator of heaven and earth lord we glorify and we praise your name lord we thank you for your word the word which is the light that cannot be extinguished by the darkness we thank you for our lord jesus christ our wonderful counselor the king of kings the alpha and the omega who gave his life for us on the cross we thank you for his ascension thank you that we know that he conquered death and that he's sitting at your right hand where he's interceding for us at the throne of grace lord we thank you for the holy spirit our guide comforter and protector lord and i pray for all everyone listening or watching this video lord please bless them touch them in body soul and spirit lord please help them put a wall of protection around them and bless each one of them in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.